Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if you're new. Before we start, I just want to say thank you so much to The Ninth Project. They are an amazing company, and um, I'm now an ambassador for them. They are kind of a clothing brand, but they also have mugs and um, different notebooks, and they have all sorts of things. But basically, for every single purchase you make, they plant a tree. They are amazing and I actually have a coupon code for all of you guys to use it's EFG exotics I'll put it right here for you and then also I'll have a link to their Instagram and to their website in the bio so please check them out so today's video is going to be all about Cresta Gecko care I hope you all enjoy <music> Okay, so I'm going to start off with their diet. Basically, in captivity, you'll mainly be feeding them Pangea and Rapashi. Some people say Rapashi, but I'm pretty sure it's Rapashi. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure. But this is actually my Crested Gecko's favorite of the Pangeas. It is just Pangea Gecko diet with insects. They have a bunch of different flavors for you to choose from, so always kind of have variety. And then also we have Rapashi, which this is just the normal Cresta Gecko diet that they have. But they also have a bunch of different flavors, and they have some that are for Cresta Geckos and Gargoyle Geckos. So that's pretty cool. Rapashi also has um, food for insects and tons of other reptiles, so I definitely recommend them. For not only your crusted geckos, but you can use them with other things too, so that's pretty cool. So not only should they receive the powder foods, but also they should have protein like insects and it's good to feed them live every once in a while. Obviously don't give it to them every single day, but um, I try to give it to mine about once a week, maybe once every other week. So. They are definitely important. Basically what these different foods are is they are a powder that you mix with water and they go in these little cups that come in bags like these. This is a brand new bag because I still haven't finished my other one. So what you do to make their food on like a regular basis, um, you can do every night or every other night. I kind of, I check it every night but sometimes the food has already kind of gotten dry after one night. If not, I will leave it in for another night. But what you do is you take one of your little cups, you take some of your powder. A lot of people measure it out, but you kind of get different consistencies with how much water you add. And each gecko from everything I've experienced and from what I've heard and what I've read, they will tend to like different consistencies. Some of them like it more water, some of them like it thicker. Mine kind of likes it a little bit thicker than ketchup. That's how I think of mine. So you just kind of add a little bit in, or a lot of it, but you know, that's fine. And then I choose my pressure mister, because I have a lot of enclosures to miss down. Actually, I only have two, but it takes a while. So I just hold it down, and this works great. So what I do is I just kind of put a little bit in there, and then you can use, I use the end of a plastic fork, um, and then I just keep using it over and over. But I actually don't know what that is right now, so I'm just going to find something that is clean and I can use real quick. So, so I totally just like grabbed my tongs and I cleaned them off. So we're just going to stir it around really good. And that's about all you do, you just stir it around. And sometimes it'll be too thick, so you're gonna wanna add some more water. And you just kinda keep mixing until you get the consistency that you like. That is all you do, and then you place it into your gecko's food ledge that they have in their enclosure. That leads me to the next thing, which is their enclosure. Now, obviously, if you're gonna have a gecko, you need to have an enclosure. So, one of the top enclosures that people use for crested geckos and many other animals, I have one right here for my leopard gecko, is exoterras. 
So the minimum for an adult crested gecko is an 18 by 18 by 24 exoterra. For babies, a lot of people will go with 12 by 12 by 18s because sometimes it kind of stresses out a baby to be in a larger space. And then also it can make it harder for them to find their food. Mine went straight into an 18 by 18 by 24 and he did fine. But if your baby is having issues with finding its food, it is good to downgrade them before and then when they are an adult, you can go ahead and upgrade them. So crested geckos are arboreal geckos, meaning they like to be up in the trees. They don't just walk around on the floor. If your crested gecko does just walk around the floor, you um, might want to take it to a vet. Because they don't really do that. Mine does it sometimes, he'll like walk around. But he doesn't really do it anymore. It's because he used to have like a little waterfall. So he'd like walk around and stuff by it. I don't know. But because they are arboreal, they need a tall tank. Like I said before, an 18 by 18 by 24 exoterra does great. Or you could even use a um, 20 gallon long tilted onto its side so that it is tall. So crested geckos and many other types of animals need places to hide and you wanna try to make it as naturalistic as possible. So for a crested gecko, you will need to get a bunch of like suction cup plants or even magnetic plants or you can do a bioactive enclosure which is natural plants and then you also will have like a cleanup crew which is like different insects like isopods I believe and little springtails and they kind of clean it up they keep it nice and clean for you but these are more work than just a normal gecko tank, but also not. Wait, no. Doing a bioactive enclosure can get pretty pricey, especially with buying all the plants and all the things you need. I actually plan to go bioactive with my crested gecko in the future, and when I do, I'll make a video all about it. Something important to keep in mind is that crested geckos need to stay in temperatures between 72 and 82. This is a little bit controversial because sometimes it does exceed 82 in their natural habitat and they do fine and sometimes it does get below. The general rule is 65 to 85 but I try to keep mine between like 70 and 82. I try to never let it go over 83 but it's okay if it does but just never let it exceed 90. Crested geckos can get heat strokes along with many other animals and so you definitely don't want that to happen. Crested geckos are nocturnal, meaning that they are most active at night. So keep that in mind. You don't want to be waking them up all day just to play with them. This is my crested gecko. His name is Echo, and he's a little over a year old. Crested geckos grow very slowly, but they definitely get bigger than this. And they get a lot wider, too. Crested geckos have a feature known as firing up and firing down. Right now, my crested gecko is fired up, and it's not exact on why they fire up, but a lot of it can be due to stress, or mine typically does it when he wakes up, he becomes more active, and that's what a lot of them do. As they become more active, they start to show their true colors, but as they sleep, they are a lot more faded out and a lot paler. Crested geckos, in my opinion, are the most amazing reptile to keep as a beginner pet because they are relatively easy depending on what you can provide. If you can provide a tall tank for them and you can acquire their needs of them being nocturnal and their diet, which is also extremely easy because it's basically a powder, um, they're amazing and they don't require heat at all. You don't have to have light on their enclosure, but it is good to if they're in an area that it's dark even during the day. Crested geckos are especially known for their extremely docile nature. They typically do not bite and they typically are not aggressive in any way. Mine has always been very calm and very sweet. He's never bitten me. Okay, well he's bitten me once. I was feeding him and I was feeding him live insects. It was an honest mistake. Humidity is very important to crested geckos as it is naturally humid in their environment. And also, 
I've noticed that when it's not humid, my gecko has a harder time actually being able to stick to the surface of glass and being able to climb up things in general. A good rule of thumb is 60% humidity. Make sure you always have a thermostat and a hygrometer in order to measure the temperature and the amount of humidity that is in the air and just in their enclosure. In order to keep it humid in your Crested Gecko enclosure, you should mist it down every morning and night. I have a pressure mister right here and that way I'm not having to refill it constantly and then also it's a lot easier. You just kind of hold down the button instead of having to keep squeezing and squeezing and squeezing for it to mist because honestly it hurts your hands after a while. Crested geckos do not have eyelids so their eyes are always open and it sometimes to some people is a little creepy but I think it just makes them extra cute. Because they're not able to close their eyes, to keep them moist, you'll see your gecko licking its eyes a lot. It's important to keep in mind that crested geckos jump a lot, especially because they are not terrestrial. So if you have a gecko, especially a new gecko, and it jumps a lot, that would be why. Be very careful when taming down a crested gecko, especially if it's a baby, because they do jump and sometimes they can get hurt if they jump from a high distance. Crested geckos typically do not drink from standing water, but it is good to always provide a water dish in their enclosure. Mine, does, mine actually doesn't have a water dish, but this is because he has a flowing waterfall that I've seen him drink from many times. Also, each and every time you mist down their enclosure, they'll typically drink the water droplets off of the leaves and off of the glass. It's important to remember that every gecko is different, and if you get one that doesn't like people and doesn't like handling, then you're just gonna have to live with that. You can't do anything if they just really don't like it. You can try your best to tame and bond them, but if they absolutely hate it and hate being taken out of their enclosure, and even if they are extremely aggressive, you should just leave them alone. Though this is very uncommon for a crested gecko to be like this. I hope you all enjoyed. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below what you'd like to see in my next video. Bye!